Hey there, fellow YouTubers! Welcome back to my channel, where we explore the fascinating world of taxes and finance. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on the valuable information I'm about to share with you today. In my previous videos, we've covered a wide range of tax topics, from personal finance to business taxation. And today, we're diving deep into the intricacies of pay, pay as you earn, taxation in Uganda. If you're an employee, employer or planning to become one, this is a must-watch video. So, what is pay all about? Pay is a system that affects all working individuals in Uganda, and it stands for pay as you earn. It's a method where your employer deducts taxes directly from your paycheck and remits them to the tax authorities on your behalf. It's crucial to understand how this system works, as it directly affects your take-home pay and financial planning. But don't worry, I've got you covered. In today's video, I'll break down the key definitions provided by the Income Tax Act to help you understand the nitty-gritty details of pay. We'll talk about assessments, employees, employment income, employers, and more. We'll also discuss the distinction between resident and non-resident individuals according to the Income Tax Act. Understanding whether you fall into one category or the other is vital, as it affects your tax obligations and the rates you'll be subject to. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid grasp of pay taxation in Uganda. You'll be equipped with the knowledge to ensure you're accurately taxed and can make informed financial decisions. But that's not all. And here's the exciting part. I'll be regularly uploading informative content like this, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay updated with the latest videos. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming up. So, my fellow YouTubers, let's unravel the mysteries of pay taxation in Uganda together. Click that play button, give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions below. I'll personally respond to each one of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Here are important jargons with their interpretation according to the Income Tax Act. First up, we have, Assessment. In the context of the Ugandan Tax Act, assessment refers to the process of determining the chargeable income and the amount of tax payable by a taxpayer for a specific year of income. It also includes the ascertainment of rental income and the amount of tax payable on it by an individual. Moreover, it encompasses the determination of penal tax and any decisions made by the commissioner that are subject to objection and appeal. 2. Business in the tax world. Business refers to any trade, profession, vocation, or adventure in the nature of trade. However, it does not include employment. So, if you're running your own business or involved in any entrepreneurial activities, this definition is important to keep in mind. 3. Company In this context, a company refers to a legal entity, whether corporate or unincorporated, that is created or recognized under the law in Uganda or elsewhere. This includes bodies corporate, unit trusts, but excludes other trusts or partnerships. 4. Dependent When we talk about dependents in relation to a member of a retirement fund, we refer to the member's spouse, any child, including adopted children, under the age of 18, or any other relative who relies on the member for support. It's an important consideration when it comes to taxation. 5. Employee and employer Let's touch upon, employee, and, employer. An employee is an individual engaged in employment, which can include working for someone else, holding a directorship in a company, having a position with fixed or ascertainable remuneration, or even holding a public office. On the other hand, an employer is a person who employs or remunerates an employee. 6. Employment income, employment income, is a significant term to understand. It refers to the income earned from employment and has specific implications under the Ugandan Tax Act. Keep an eye out for more details on this in our upcoming videos. 7. Exempt organization, this term encompasses companies, institutions, or irrevocable trusts that are exempt from tax. These exemptions are defined in the schedule attached to the Ugandan Tax Act. 8. Non-resident person in this context, 
A non-resident person is someone who meets the specific criteria outlined in Section 14 of the Ugandan Tax Act. This definition is crucial for determining the tax obligations of individuals who are not residents of Uganda. Firstly, a resident individual must have a permanent home in Uganda. This means that they have a place of residence in the country. A. Permanent home. Secondly, a person can be considered a resident individual if they spend a significant amount of time in Uganda. There are two scenarios for this. B. Presence in Uganda. If an individual is present in Uganda for a total of 183 days or more in any 12-month period that starts or ends during the year of income, they are considered a resident individual. I. 183 days. If an individual is present in Uganda during the year of income and has been present for periods averaging more than 122 days in each of the two preceding years of income, they are also considered a resident individual e. averaging 122 days. Lastly, an individual who is an employee or official of the government of Uganda and is posted abroad during the year of income is also considered a resident individual. c. employee, official abroad. Now, let's move on to resident companies and the criteria they must meet. Resident company criteria A company is considered a resident company for a year of income in Uganda if it meets one of the following conditions a incorporated or formed firstly the company must be incorporated or formed under the laws of uganda b management and control secondly if a company has its management and control exercised in uganda at any time during the year of income it is considered a resident company c majority of operations lastly if a company undertakes the majority of its operations in uganda during the year of income it is also considered a resident company. And there you have it. The criteria for determining resident individuals and resident companies for a year of income in Uganda. It's important to understand these definitions for tax purposes. Tax exempt employer. This refers to an employer whose income is exempt from tax. It's important to be aware of this distinction when considering tax implications in relation to your employer. Taxpayer A taxpayer is any person who derives an amount subject to tax under the Ugandan Tax Act. This includes individuals who incur assessed losses for a year of income and anyone required by the Act to furnish a tax return. Year of income When we talk about the year of income, we're referring to a specific period of time. In Uganda, the year of income is defined as the 12-month period that ends on the 30th of June. It's important to note that the year of income includes not only the regular 12-month period but also two special cases, the substituted year of income and the transitional year of income. Substituted year of income A substituted year of income occurs when there is a change in the taxpayer's accounting period. In such cases, the regular 12-month period may be altered, and a different period is substituted as the year of income. Transitional year of income A transitional year of income is another unique circumstance. It arises when there is a transition from one tax regime to another. During this transitional period, the tax laws and regulations may change, and a different set of rules might apply. And there you have it. We've covered the key definitions from the Ugandan Tax Act, giving you a solid foundation for understanding taxation in Uganda. Remember, staying informed about these definitions is essential for navigating the world of taxation and ensuring compliance. Now let's tackle employment income in depth. What is employment income? Employment income, in simple terms, refers to any income derived by an employee from their employment. It includes various types of payments, whether they are of a revenue or capital nature. Types of employment income A. Wages, salary, and more. The first category of employment income includes familiar terms such as wages, salary, leave pay, payment in lieu of leave, overtime pay, fees, commission, gratuity, bonus, and various allowances like traveling, entertainment, utilities, cost of living, housing, medical, and more. B. Value of benefits granted. Additionally, employment income includes the value of any benefits granted to an employee. 
This can encompass perks provided by the employer, such as company vehicles, housing allowances, or other non-monetary benefits. c. Reimbursements and discharges. If an employer reimburses an employee for certain expenditures incurred on behalf of the employer, those amounts also fall under employment income. However, it's important to note that this does not include expenditures incurred by the employee for the proper business purposes of the employer, e.g. per diem. d. Compensation and termination payments. Any compensation received for the termination of a contract of employment, whether it was contractually agreed upon or not, is considered employment income. This also includes amounts commuted from contracts of employment. e. Insurance premiums. If a tax-exempt employer pays premiums for insurance on the life of an employee, with the insurance benefiting the employee or their dependents, those premium amounts are considered employment income. f. Consideration for agreement to conditions. Any amounts derived as consideration for an employee's agreement to employment conditions or changes in their conditions of employment are included in employment income. g. Employee Share Acquisition Schemes Now, let's talk about employee share acquisition schemes. If an employee receives shares from such a scheme, the employment income includes the difference between the value of shares issued to the employee and any consideration given by the employee for those shares. This also includes amounts given as consideration for the grant of a right or option to acquire the shares. h. Gains from share disposal. Finally, employment income encompasses any gains derived by an employee when disposing of a right or option to acquire shares under an employee share acquisition scheme. We've covered the various components of employment income, shedding light on what falls under this category. Understanding employment income is crucial for both employees and employers to ensure compliance with tax regulations. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative content. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Stay tuned for our next video, where we'll be exploring more fascinating topics in the world of finance. Until then, happy learning!